very cold and wet Chicago, Illinois. 46 degrees the temperature, and the temperature is dropping. The field condition terrible. The footing will be treacherous for the Giants and the Bears on this matchup today on Fox. And now welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. I am Joe Buck. Troy Aikman is coming right up. Well, have you ever read as much or heard as much about a special teams player as you have Devin Hester coming into this game? Worth every bit of the talk, and you could make the case that single-handedly with his two kick returns for touchdowns last week against Denver, he kept the Chicago Bears playoffs hopes alive. And now we talk to Troy, and Troy will talk about the quarterbacks, and I think you could make a pretty easy case to say that Grossman, who was benched after the first three starts, has played better since he got the job back. He has played better. I mean, he certainly understands that he can do a better job in that area, but Rex Grossman really is not the focal point of this offense for the Chicago Bears. It's about the running game, and they've not run the football well all season long. They started to pick it up here the last couple of weeks, but today they're going to be doing it without Cedric Benson, and they're hoping that Adrian Peterson, who will be stepping in in his place, can give them something that they've really not had much of this year. It's real easy to forget that the Giants are seven and four and that record will get you far in the NFC the way things are right now but it's that way because of the way Eli Manning is just picked apart whether it's what he does on the field or after the game in front of the microphones and he's going to need to have a good one today after a brutal week. Yeah I think that he's going to need to get off to a good start. I mean every quarterback will tell you when you go into a game you want to have a good start but in light of the week that Eli Manning has had I think it becomes even that much more important and it's not going to be easy here today. He's here on the road in a hostile environment. Conditions are very sloppy. It's been raining all morning and early afternoon, but they're going to need to see more out of him than what he was able to give them last week against Minnesota. We're going to see Eli Manning right out of the gate, and you look at the number 21 worn by players on teams across the NFL in honor of the late Sean Taylor, who passed away on Tuesday. After being shot in his home late Sunday night, early Monday morning. And there are a number of players on these two teams that are playing in this game here late today on Sunday who are going to do everything they can to try and make it to the airport after this game and get to Miami for the funeral services tomorrow. The Bears, by the way, play Washington on Thursday. But right now it's Chicago and New York. And on the dead run, it's Ruben Drones on the return, and Drones will cross the 35. Good starting field position for the Giants and Eli Manning. When you are drafted number one overall, as Eli Manning was in 2004, and then was traded to the New York Giants, and you play in New York, the spotlight is on you, and they have, as we said a moment ago, picked apart his play on the field. They pick apart his body language. You don't have to read much into Tom Coughlin's body language. You know what he's thinking every minute. The way he answers questions about his performance, about the offense's performance. He has had a rough week. On first down, starts with a throw and hits Plexico Burris, who falls forward for a first down. 11-yard gain, and Plexico Burris carries it up to the 49-yard line after the catch. You know, Bill Parcells used to say that these are the types of games when you really find out what it is that you have at the quarterback position. You know, when you come off a game where you've thrown two or three interceptions, in Eli's case, four interceptions, and you, and you maybe cost your team a game, you know, how do you react? How do you respond? How do you go in? that week and face the guys in the locker room and come out prepared to have a big game this week and I know that it's important to Eli and he's worked hard in doing that. Here's Derek Ward who is back in the lineup and starting for Brandon Jacobs. Ward missed four games with an ankle and a groin injury. He was really running well. They, they didn't have Jacobs at the beginning of the season was hurt in that season opening loss in Dallas Ward stepped in Troy and when he was healthy and in there he really impressed everybody. Yeah when he's had his opportunities Joe he's made the most of them. he's done very very well and you know then the last few weeks they've been without Brandon Jacobs along with Derek Ward and they've had to rely on Reuben Brown or Reuben Drones excuse me. Second down and five for the Giants. Another handoff to Derek Ward. Gets to the edge, cups it upfield, and has a nice gain on second down 
of 13 yards. A fresh set of downs for the Giants, who are putting together a good opening drive. And I think, you know, like we talked about, you know, with the Chicago Bears and, and them needing to get more out of their running game, the Giants haven't run the ball particularly well here over the last couple of games either. You know, for the year, they've been pretty good. But the last couple of weeks, they failed to even get to 100 yards rushing. And, and when you're unable to do that, that also puts a lot of pressure on your passing game. Second throw from Manning. Unleashes and throws it right into the arms of Erlacher. The last thing that Eli Manning wanted on the first possession today, four picks last week, two passes here today, one completion, one interception. Well, you can see the space, right, that Eli Manning sees. And, you know, it, I don't know if the ball's getting away from him or if he expected Jeremy Shockey to cross Brian Urlacher's face. I mean, it was clear that Shockey set in the hole where the hole was. And there has been a miscommunication. And I got to tell you, going back to last week, it seems that there are a lot of miscommunications. And I don't know if that's all Eli or if it's all on the receivers or what exactly it is. But you're never going to throw the ball effectively when you're not sure what your players around you are going to be doing. Grossman trying to find somewhere to go. And he hits Peterson in stride down the sideline. An impressive throw. Torber forced him out after a 29 yard catch and run from Adrian Peterson making his second NFL start. That was a good job there of Rex Grossman moving around and then Adrian Peterson staying alive. I mean, and this is something that he gives this Chicago offense that a guy like Cedric Benson did not, and that is a better receiving threat. Little hurry up attack by the Bears, and waiting for it was Fred Robbins in this Giants defense, a loss of two. I tell you, Fred Robbins, I mean, he gets more playing time because of the injury to Matthias Kiwanuka and, and last week in that game against Minnesota really did a great job led the team in tackles last week and he also led him in quarterback hits second down and 12 over the middle it's Desmond Clark he's got a first down for Chicago at the Giants 39 you know, I like what Chicago's doing they're going into a hurry up offense a lot of times you know you'll go to a no huddle but there's no urgency at the line there is some urgency with Rex Grossman. I mean, obviously, it's early in the game. They got all the time in the world, but he is trying to get a fast-paced offense going right now. Grossman with a pocket, steps up and hits. Musin Muhammad for 11. You know, so many times when you're able to get into a no huddle like this and not allow a defense to substitute, really not allow them to make too many defensive calls, then as an offense, you're dictating pace, but you're also dictating what a defense can do against you. Adrian Peterson, not much, picks up two. And for a guy like Adrian Peterson, he's getting a second NFL start into a man. Because of the respect that these Bears teammates have for Peterson, they are thrilled that he's getting this shot. Not because it comes at the expense of Cedric Benson, who's lost and on IR for the rest of the year. But they love this guy, and he's finally getting a chance to start. Blitz, complete, Clark, first down. Grossman really seeing it well here on the first possession for the Bears. He really is. I know that was a big win last week. He struggled through a big part of that game, but then at the end, especially in overtime, he made the plays that he had to make to give his team a chance to win a football game against the Broncos, and it's carried over here today. Peterson carries it. Big haul. Down to the six. It depends on the spot, whether it's first and goal or second and less than one. You talk about Adrian Peterson. I mean, obviously not the talent of a Cedric Benson, but like you said, Joe, to a man, they were awfully excited about his opportunity. Peterson first down to the two. And I don't think there's any doubt that the Bears coming out in a no huddle 
a fast paced offensive attack has caught this Giants defense on its heels yeah, and Ron Turner the offensive coordinator has done a great job because they're still giving the plays to Rex Grossman in his ear through the communication device between coach and quarterback and they've done a good job of mixing it up I mean it hasn't just been run it hasn't just been passed they've pretty much been balanced with what they've done now they huddled before this play here down on the goal line from Grossman over the middle touchdown Clark a flawless drive put together by the Chicago offense and engineered by Rex Grossman what a great drive on their part just moving the ball getting it into a position down here on the goal line and then they go play action with Desmond Clark it's just hard on those linebackers. You saw Antonio Pierce step up. And when you've got a team who likes to run the ball, you know they like to run the ball down on the goal line. Play action on first down is awfully tough to cover. The Giants took the opening kickoff and got it down near the red zone of the Bears. For Brian Erlacher came up with his second interception of the season. It led to this at the end of a great drive by Chicago. Touchdown Clark, 7-0 Bears. The Chicago defense, that's only their eighth interception that set it up. They had 24 last year and led the league in takeaways, something the defense has not been doing for Chicago. This is Bradshaw, survives one hit and gives the Giants good field position, inches across their own 30. 18-yard return, back to the field as Erlacher, his Bears up 7-0 after that touchdown to Desmond Clark. Coordinator for the Giants with a huddle over on the sideline trying to figure out what just happened. And now Eli Manning, with all of his issues, has to try and guide this Giants attack while they play from behind almost right out of the gate. And a two-yard carry brought down by Erlacher is Ward. And now we'll see how Eli gets along. It is hard for the average fan to believe or understand how Eli Manning, with a combination of Shockey, Toomer, and Burris, guys that he's basically been with since the start of his career with the Giants, can't be on the same page at this point. Well, and a lot of that I know, you know, relative to Plexico Burris, I mean, he hasn't practiced all season long. Here's Ward again, left side, and he is brought down immediately. Anderson over there, a Goonlier in on the stop a gain of only one third down coming up but but it's a good question and I and I know that it is a question that the fans out there want to know you know how is it that it does not look like they're on the same page and I go back and I watch the games and I watch the film and there's just a lot of things that he, as a quarterback and I'm not saying Eli certainly could have played better last week but there are a lot of other things happening that are keeping him or any other quarterback in this situation to be able to play at the level you'd like. I mean, there's just a lot of uncertainty as to what is being asked or what they expect of each other. Eli airs it out. Penalty flag is thrown. There was some contact. Sonoris Moss downfield. He was working against Tremaine McBride, and we'll see if this is indeed against Chicago. Looks like it. Yeah, Tremaine Part McBride. Of the class holding 26 defense. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down and a good call there and, and 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 actually a pretty good play there by Truman McBride I mean once he knew that he was going to get beat for a touchdown You know that's what you want to do is then grab him you'll give up the penalty you don't want to give up the points You know and Sonoris Moss over the last couple of games he's, he's started to come on a little bit He's starting to get a little more involved in the offense and and probably rightfully so I think that you know Plexico Burris because of his injuries now he's got a knee that goes along with that ankle you know he you can tell is, just, is not running anywhere near like what he had been earlier in the year with that same bad ankle. First down, just a five-yard penalty on the defensive hold, and Ward carries it left side. McGowan on the stop, a gain of two. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt. As the Browns, Derek Anderson threw an interception that was returned for a touchdown, then fumbled one away that Arizona turned into this Kurt Warner to Leonard Pope score. And it's 14 nothing Cardinals all off Derek Anderson turnovers. Back to Joe, Troy, and Pam. All right, Kurt, thank you. And if you want more info on that game, you can go to foxsports.com or NFL.com. 
penalty was on Tremaine McBride two plays ago. He's playing and starting in place of Nathan Vasher, who's missing his ninth straight game. With a tear in his groin. Eli Manning, nowhere to go. Agunlea brings him down, a gain of only three, third down coming up. Well, you're not going to be given a lot of time against the Chicago Bears defensive front. They've done a good job. I mean, they have struggled in a lot of areas defensively. Getting pressure on the quarterback is not one of them. And Ogunlea, he is really on a hot streak here over the last three to four ball games. He's gotten a number of sacks, a number of pressures on the quarterback. Eli had time initially, just couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Third down and five, and a handoff is to Ward. And Ward is brought down a yard and a half shy of a first down. A gain of only three. Briggs made the stop, and a punt is coming from the Giants. That gets a reaction from this crowd because Devin Hester will be back. And if Devin Hester has any chance of returning this punt, it is a mistake by Jeff Fiegels, who is the best in the history of the NFL at this particular objective of downing the ball inside the 20 and not allowing a return. He is a weapon today, Fiegels for the Giants. Gets a low snap, angles it for the sideline, and it hops out of bounds before Hester can put his hands on it. They mark it at the 19-yard line. 34-yard punt, no return for Hester, 7-0 Bears. First three games was benched after a three-interception day against Dallas. Watch Greason play for five. Making his fourth start in a row. Bears are two and one in his previous three, and he hits Bradley, who's wrestled out of bounds to 25. And I know Mark Bradley is a guy, Troy, you were wondering about. I think Rex is as well. He wants to see Bradley on the field more. Yeah, I was just thinking about it when I was watching the game last week that here Mark Bradley was a guy who was drafted in the second round a couple of years ago and, and was coming along. And then he's had a number of injuries the last couple of years, but Last year going into the playoffs, he was a big part of what they were doing because he gives them such a big play threat. But they haven't used him much this year. They want to use him a lot more here in this game today. Peterson carries left side, and he is brought down short of a first down by Strahan, a gain of two. And, and let's say this, if Bradley gets a lot of action today on the field, it's because Rex Grossman went to Ron Turner and said, hey, let's not forget about number 16. He's a weapon, and, and he's not doing anything. And I, you know, I, th I, I wonder if Rex Grossman would have done that a few weeks ago prior to when he was benched. And, you know, I know in visiting with Rex, it just seems like a big load has been taken off his shoulders to where he's willing to maybe voice himself a little bit more than what he would before. He's not worried about the consequences or what may or may not happen. He's just out playing. Peterson lunges for a first down, and that was all Adrian Peterson. A gain of two and a fresh set of downs for Chicago. And I, I, you know, I mentioned it. I do like what what the Bears are doing with a little more urgency within the offense. I know that I know that this has been an offense that has been struggling. And sometimes when an offense is struggling, every single play becomes a grind. And you start thinking about everything you're doing, wanting to be perfect on all the execution. It's hard to call plays. Sometimes speeding things up allows you not to think quite so much and just go out and play. On first down, pressure on Grossman who completes. Out just shy of the 35-yard line, Bernard Barry in a gain of five. And I know, Troy, I know you well enough to know that when you say that, part of you is thinking about the Giants. I mean, you'd like to see the Giants, I know, pick it up a little bit with their pace and get up to the line offensively and get something going. Because we have seen Eli Manning play well when they have gone no huddle. But well, we have, and, and I think that they're, you know, whatever needs to be done for the Giants in order to create some urgency, you know, I definitely think that has to happen because they definitely seem to lack that when you watch them. Peterson on a draw. Lowers his head and pulls forward for a first down. A gain of six. McCorders was in on the stop, but he was along for the ride for a short while, too. And I tell you, this offensive line for the Bears, I think, is a good group. I know they've come, un come under some criticism as well. And, you know, Olin Cruz is the guy who holds that whole thing together. They're center. You know, six-time Pro Bowler. I think it's going to be seven 
after this year, he'll be making another trip over to Hawaii. But the rest of that group, they got right tackle John St. Clair playing today for Fred Miller. But it's a group that's played better than the production that they've gotten in their running game. Grossman wide open is Berrien, and he is brought down immediately by Madison. Let's not gloss over that, though. Fred Miller, the starting right tackle, is out with a sprain in his right ankle. That means that John St. Clair is making his second start of this season out at right tackle. And so against a very good defensive front for the Giants who come in leading the league in sacks with 38. He'll have his hands full. Well, I know Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator, was happy about the field conditions knowing it would slow down that pass rush a little. The ball in the hands of Devin Hester for the first time today and he is brought down by Michael Johnson after a gain of only one. Well, that's now one of the ways that they're going to try to get the ball into Devin Hester's hands. And, you know, in talking with Ron Turner and Lovey Smith, and you say, gosh, I mean, here you got a guy who, who who's done what he's done and had the game he had last week against the Broncos. I mean, I can only imagine the things that are being discussed in these offensive staff meetings about how do we get the ball into Devin Hester's hands? I thought Ron Turner made a good point. We'll put him at 12 yards, direct snap it to him, and treat it like a punt return. <laughs> he didn't really laugh when he said it. Third no, and five. They were serious. Grossman in trouble, throws it away. Chased on the play by big Fred Robbins and O.C. Manura. And there's Fred Robbins again showing up. He helps to force the throw and a fourth down. They were looking for Bernard Berrien on the outside, and, and as you said, because of the pressure, and then Berrien just trying to get open. He and Rasheed Davis end up in the same spot. You know, Fred Robbins there, and then, of course, the pressure by O.C. Umanura. O.C.'s had him a, a good couple of weeks as well. You went a little country on me there. <laughs> Maynard hits it. The quarters. He doesn't have him a very good return. Just across the 20. And we'll see how Eli and the offense gets along with their third possession. Points. A, it's that e the Giants are on the top of the list in the wild card chase, but they have struggled losing two of their last three. B, it reminds you how well Minnesota's played, Troy, and it they are rocketing up the list of threats in the NFC here in 2007. They took apart Detroit today at home. On first down, Amani Toomer on the catch. And Amani falls forward for a first down. And nice to say hi for the first time today to Pam Oliver. Pam. Hey there, Joe. To add a little bit to your conversation earlier about Eli Manning and whether he's on the same page with his offensive teammates, well, there just isn't a whole lot of conversation between Eli and especially his wide receivers. Eli tends to spend his time on the sideline, huddled up with offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbride. They'll look over the pictures. And then there was a conversation earlier with Jeremy Shockey. But to no one's surprise, Shockey was doing most of the talking. Back to you. All right, thanks, Pam. Keep an eye on that. First down for the Giants. Manning with a pocket, airs it out. Burris downfield, it's not there. And there just is no burst for Plexigo Burris, who's now playing with a bad left knee to go with his sprained right ankle. Yeah, you know, and, you know, watching that game last week, it's it's very hard for him to make cuts. And, and you admire the guy because he's in a great deal of pain. He's battling through things, but he's not able to practice during the week. And so he and Eli haven't been able to work on anything either. I mean, there's just a lot of things going against a quarterback having success right now, you know, for this team. And, and certainly the injuries to Plexico Burris being one of them. Second down and 10, and that play never got underway. It's a false start against the Giants. We've seen a lot of this for the Giants. False start, 69, offense. Five yards penalty, still second down. We've done games where there have been delay of game calls against the Giants at home. We've seen a lot of false starts. Last week, Dave Deal had a tough time out at left tackle. This time, they get Seibert, the left guard, and it brings up second and 15. Not a very tight unit, True. to say the least, with execution. Second down and 15 with a minute two remaining in the opening quarter. 7-0 Bears. Hand off 
to Ward and Derek Ward crosses the 35 and is out near the 37 picked up eight and he makes it a more manageable third down for this Giants offense. Yeah that helps them and then Chicago on the other side. There's Michael Johnson the rookie safety who's playing you know Jabril Wilson is already inactive today and Michael Johnson getting his opportunity and running out of safeties. Third down and seven. Quick setup and throw, and it is complete to Amani Toomer. It depends on the spot. And I mean, it is right on the line. It's an unofficial line. Tom Coughlin doesn't like the spot at all. And the first quarter. With three seconds left will be stopped and we'll get a measurement. Neither coach liked the spot of the football and I mean you can see why it was placed where it was placed. I think it's a pretty good spot. It just depends on if it's enough or not. Yeah it's going to be close and from that angle it's hard to tell if in fact he was able to get across the yellow line and apparently he did. So that's it. The first quarter will come to an end and the Giants who are trailing by seven will have a first down with a ball at their own 43 yard line. So we can get a jump on the commercial break if you want or we can just wait. <laughs> Let you do what you want. OK. Two. One. That's the end of the first quarter here in Chicago with a score seven to nothing Bears. Giants with a first down when we come back. The NFL on Fox will continue after the Giants just picked up a big first. Overcame a second and 15, manning three out of five, 30 yards and an interception. After one quarter, down by seven. A blitz from the Bears and a reverse to Hickson, who is wrestled down by Alex Brown. A loss of eight. Well, the, the Chicago Bears go to an eight man front, and you're going to see Alex Brown. He just plays this beautifully. He gets up the field, he does not chase it. He reads the reverse coming back his way, he holds his ground, and then he's able to make the play. I mean, that's textbook right there on how you contain on the backside. You know, so many of these teams, they want to run that reverse around the back if you over pursue. Chicago got gashed last week against Denver on some misdirection stuff. I guarantee you that's something they spent a lot of time working on this past week. Second and 18, Manning with all day down the middle, throws behind Burris. It'll bring up third down and 18, and we go to Kurt for a game break. Bucks and Saints, and with a win by New Orleans, they could move a game behind Tampa Bay for the lead in the NFC South. Terrence Copper with the catch from Drew Brees gives them the lead in the early going in the second quarter. Go to Troy and Sam. That last throw, Eli Manning had Plexigo Burris wide open and missed him, and it's the inconsistencies and the low completion percentage that's driving Giants fans nuts. Yeah, sometimes when you're really pressing, you start aiming the ball, you just don't turn it loose, and that's what it looked like Eli was doing on that last throw. Third down and 18, underneath, playing it conservatively, it's Ward, well short of a first down. And so, if you listen real carefully, you can hear Giants fans all the way from New York saying, come on. Well, those... Those throws there, the one that he missed to Plexico first, those, those are the throws that really any quarterback in the league has to be able to make. You know, that was not a throw to where somebody did something that Eli wasn't expecting or, you know, the ball wasn't where it was supposed to be. That was pretty clean. You got a guy running a square and you got a clean look at it. Those are balls you've got to be able to complete. Fiegel's aimed straight for the sideline away from Devin Hester. Puts it in his hand but there's just nowhere to go. So a five yard return for Devin Hester, another possession for Chicago. Bears lead it by seven. A peak Bears shows you that Devin Hester is in the lineup for Chicago. Starting at their own 15. They fake a reverse and hand to Peterson right up the gut. And Adrian picks up four. Cofield 
on the stop. Well, this will be must see TV and definitely imperative viewing for anybody who cares about college football and the BCS situation right after the OT, which follows our game here in Chicago. College football's greatest teams find out who they will play in college football's greatest games. A live primetime special. You get the matchups first here on Fox after football here from Chicago in the OT. Second and six. Down the field. Devin Hester behind the defense drops it. Oh, man. This time they split Devin Hester out to the offensive right side and they run a corner blitz so now he's on a safety. And all of a sudden he just runs right by him. I mean you got I don't It's interesting concept. I don't you know they don't know that Devin Hester's going to be out there but they they split Hester out and they run a corner blitz. Now all of a sudden you got a guy of Hester's ability running the route on a safety. And, but they're unable to capitalize on it because Hester doesn't make the cap. Now the play clock expires. This is a Chicago team that leads the NFL in drops. Delay of the game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Troy, there are drops, and then there are drops. And that was Rex Grossman showing off how big his arm is, and Hester was eight yards behind Dahl and Butler who were defending against him and it hits off his shoulder pad. Yeah, I mean, he was like a rocket down that sideline. He went by everybody in no time at all. And you know and that's that's part of him you know learning the wide receiver position. This guy was a defensive back until this year's training camp and you know, playing a ball down the field even though he returns punts. It's different when you're running and trying to make a catch as opposed to field one on a punt. A blitz from the Giants and Grossman is wrapped up. Is it a safety or not? They're going to say he was corralled at the one. No safety. But great pressure by Madison off a corner blitz. Well, we've seen it now twice. We saw it on the previous play. They bring pressure again, you know, off the edge. And they're trying to get John Tate, the left tackle, out to him. And then Rex Grossman sees that it's coming. And rather than go down, he, he tucks and almost winds up with a safety. So now snapping from the one is Patrick Manley, the long snapper for the Bears, and Maynard from the back of the end zone. And that was hit funny, or somebody got a hand on it, and the ball will stop rolling near the 32. The quarter's trying to get in there at the end. They ran him out there. There was pressure by David Tyree, who is a Pro Bowl special teams player. Did he get a hand on it? I think so. A hand, a helmet, a shoulder pad, whatever it was. And because of it, just a 31-yard punt. Yeah, you get backed up, and that's what happens. Because the, where the ball was spotted, you know, you now are not able to get the necessary yardage to get away from the line of scrimmage. Then Tyree is right there and able to get an arm or a shoulder on the punt, which deflected it. This could be a big swing in the game. Think about the drop by Hester, which would have been his second 81-yard touchdown catch and run of the year. Then the sack by Madison, and now this from Derek Ward after the short punt. Ward still on his feet, and down inside the five. They're going to mark him at the one. It's first and goal. What a turnaround this is in the last three minutes. Watch Madison Hedgecock here and the job that he does kicking out. You know, right there, which gives Ward then that seam. I'll tell you, Ward's running the ball awfully well. Big hole there. I mean, not a lot of running backs are not going to be able to pick up a lot of yardage with the hole that he had. But he is running tough, and he's finishing runs at the end. This is Drones, and he pounds it in for a touchdown. Ruben Drones has six touchdowns. Meanwhile, the challenge flag, I believe Lovey Smith was challenging that Ward had stepped out of bounds going down the sideline before getting to the one. But they didn't see the flag, let the snap happen. 
And Ruben Drones at the moment is credited with his sixth touchdown run, all six one yard touchdown runs this season. Let's look. Here's what Lovey Smith was challenging on the previous play. Prior to the ball being snapped, Chicago He's is in. challenging. He's in. But the runner had stepped out of bounds prior to getting to the one yard line. I think he's in the whole way. Well, well, I do too, but I mean, how do you come back after the play has been run? I mean, Lovey says that the flag was out prior to the play. Probably was, but if nobody saw it, how do you not count the touchdown? So right now we're in a Chicago challenge. Right. Peanut gallery. I pointed the wrong spot there, Troy, but right over there. But the ball's already been snapped, and the challenge flag is flying in. I agree with you. That it was too late to challenge, and Lovey Smith, he doesn't care if they lose the challenge. Either way, it takes the touchdown. After away. reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. The runner did not step out of bounds. It'll be first and goal from the one. Chicago will be charged with their first team timeout. But the Bears benefit because it takes a touchdown off the board. Well, that's right. And I mean, he threw it before he knew what the result of that play was, but. The flag was thrown as the ball was being snapped by the Giants. And so to me, if it's not thrown in a timely fashion to where the officials can recognize that it's out and a challenge is being made, then it shouldn't count. I, mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, this whole challenging thing, I, 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 people know where I stand on it. I, I'm just against it. I, I, think, I don't think it, it works as well as what it's supposed to. And too many times we see things like what we just saw. So now it's drones and he's brought down and loses two. So Tom Coughlin got the explanation while we were in break. And one of the officials said well we saw him throw the flag but by our estimation the flag hadn't even hit the ground and the ball had been snapped. And because they awarded the challenge it took a touchdown off the board and now with the Chicago defense they have a chance to keep the Giants out of the end zone as Mark Anderson made that last play. Second and goal. Again, Drones doesn't get there. Going nowhere, and Lance Briggs was in the middle of it. For Chicago, it's third and goal. Yeah, Lance Briggs, I mean, what a year he has had. And to think that they may not have even have had him, he comes... He comes shooting right through the middle there and misses Hedgecock and is disruptive just enough to where he's not able to get any kind of leverage to get into the end zone. We'll take a break. A player for the Bears is down and getting looked at. Darwin. So now it's. Right. I, I think the point you made, Joe, on that challenge was Lovey Smith was going to win either way. Right. And he's won to this point, but his defense can keep the Giants out of the end zone. Handoff is to Ward, and justice is served as Ward gets in for the touchdown on third and goal. So the Giants pound it in, and you go from what looked like an 81-yard touchdown throw to Devin Hester on one end to a sack by Madison a short punt good play by Tyree a couple of big runs by Derek Ward and he gets his third touchdown run of the season on third and goal. Well it was a nice job you know with with the field position for the Giants on that possession to to be able to finish it off and come away with a touchdown as opposed to a field goal which a lot of times is what they have had to settle for this year. Lawrence Tynes now. High snap drills it through. Go back to the Hester drop, trying to get the hang of it on offense. Now running away from the ball instead of running toward it. He could not make the connection. Ward pounds it in. Tom Coughlin and the Giants have tied it at seven. The old run for the Giants so far. Derek Ward, nine carries, 69 yards, and he pounded it in on a big third and goal. And the Giants have tied this game at seven. He's impressive. At one point picked up off the practice squad from the Jets. And without Brandon Jacobs, their big feature back, 
They're not missing much with Derek Ward in there right now. No, they're not. And even when Derek Ward was down, I, you know, I thought Reuben Drones had done a good job running the football as well. And it's a good thing the Giants came into the season with some of the depth that they have at the tailback position. And even their rookie, Ahmad Bradshaw, last week got an opportunity. I thought he showed some flashes also. Now we get to see how the Giants are going to try it with Devin Hester back there. They kick it directly to Rasheed Davis. And Rasheed Davis is out across the 33-yard line. So we welcome you into our booth. And with the Chicago, and now there's a little skirmish down on the field, they break up. With the Chicago offense back on the field, I think it's worth bringing up what you said earlier, that you sensed some relief on the part of Rex Grossman, who is now back making his fourth start since that benching. And so far, he's looked pretty good here in a big game. You know, I thought it was as relaxed as I have seen him in the times that we've had opportunities to do Chicago Bears games. And, you know, it's kind of like he said. He, he, he was very loose, and he says, hey, you know, what more can they do to me? I've, I've already been benched. I mean, they can't take the job away from me again and have it mean anything more than what it already has. And, and that's good. I mean, when you're that uptight as a quarterback, it's hard to go out and play well. And he's played much better since coming back. He throws, and it's nearly picked off by Johnson, who's back in the lineup. Aaron Ross, the starting rookie cornerback, is out with a bad hamstring, not active today. Jabril Wilson is out with a knee injury. So Michael Johnson, the rookie safety, is starting in his spot. And Aaron Ross has been replaced by Kevin Dockery. Dockery's only 5'8". So there's a size advantage for anyone that number 35 lines up against. This time it's Bradley at the top of the screen. On second and 10, pressure on a blitz, and it's Olsen, the rookie tight end, doing all he can. Third down coming up, and let's go to Kurt Menefee for a game break. Well, Luke McCown started for the injured Jeff Garcia for Tampa, and it's a good start for him. 13 for his first 13, including the 60-yarder to Joey Galloway. Set up a touchdown, and right now, they lead the Saints 10 to 7. Troy, Jimmy wants to know if you missed him in Dallas at the reunion the other night. <laughs> hey, I knew he wasn't going to be there, but I will tell you, there were a lot of players asking me where he was. I was surprised they even had to ask. He was fishing. They had a 15-year reunion in Dallas. <laughs> the Cowboys took on Green Bay on Thursday. The old coach was a no-show. Here is Grossman being swallowed up in the backfield. Strahan in on the sack. Justin Tuck as well. A loss of three fourth down. And the defense for the Giants is showing up after a bad first series. Well, this front, I mean, you're going to see the defensive front for the Giants. They just do a great job of getting pressure. You know, you got Strahan coming off the edge, and then Eumannura as well. And then when you get guys up inside, I mean, that's a that's a good group of guys that can that can get after the quarterback, not just in this game, but as they have all year. Quick three and out. And the corner slipped. I don't think the ball touched him. They throw a penalty flag on it. The ball was touched by Chicago at the 25. It's an illegal touch. It belongs to the Giants. The kicking team cannot be the first to touch it. The only issue is whether it hit McCorders, which it didn't look like it did as McCorders slipped. Well, you get that close to the ball, and you just don't know what that ball is going to do. And he was fortunate that it bounced then to the left and away from him. But if it does not, to repeat, if it did not hit McCorders, and the only question did it nick his hand along the way? There's a flag down anyway. But once the Bears touch it, the ball belongs, again, if it doesn't hit McCorders, to the Giants. Because yeah. it's in the category of an illegal touch. But we'll check the marker, and I don't know if they're discussing right now whether it did hit McCorders. If it did, then it's a different story, and the Bears can get the football. Well, from what we saw, I mean, it didn't look like it was anywhere close. Porters is telling his teammates it didn't hit his hand. So the long discussion, there's a lot to determine here. But the main thing is whether the ball hit McCorders. If it missed him altogether, and that didn't hit his hand, if it missed him altogether, it looks like it did, the Giants will have the football. Well, if it hit him at all, it hit him down around the ankle or in the shin and from the first look that we had it, it didn't look like it was close to hitting him there either. 
I would agree. I thought the only question was whether it hit the hand, and that second replay, the one we just showed you, didn't look like it caught him in the hand at all. Here's another angle. That ball misses, I think. It misses his foot and ankle. It doesn't come close to his hand, and so the Giants should get the ball because it was first touched by Chicago after it. It's kind of an illusion. I don't think that hit his hand. Illegal touching of the kick by the kicking team number 21 and went out of bounds and came in and was the first to touch the kick. Five yard penalty, replay, fourth down. So, hey, RW, you got to go back. <laughs> hey, put your helmet on. You got to go back and return another punt. He's pretty proud that he was right and saying that he didn't touch it. Well, he didn't touch it, and here's where the flag was as they get Corey Graham for going out of bounds and being the first to touch it. And they are going to make Chicago re kick. They could tack on five yards at the end of the punt, but they're going to make them re kick. And with a sloppy field, you never know what you may get. Yeah, and I know in talking with Tom Coughlin, I mean, he. He said, hey, this is a game where field position is really important, and, and it's always important, but when you look at these two teams and the offense is the way that they have both been struggling and then the field conditions on top of that. Yeah I mean field position is vitally important as we saw when the Giants were able to get great field position and then take it in for their seven points. So in the quarters now will wait just inside is 30. The ball be snapped from the Chicago 29 and. The punt team back on the field for the Bears. Maynard hit that last one more of a line drive, a wet football. And it goes back to the basics on a day like this, looking for a good snap from Pat Manley, the long snapper at center for the Bears. McCorders back to the 25. A chance for a return. Good coverage downfield. And McCorders out to the 31. That's it. Six yard return. Garrett Wolf downfield to make the stop. Giants have it. We're tied at seven. Day in Chicago. Good football. Easy for us to say. Tucked into our warm little booth with <laughs> snacks provided by Ben Alltop here in our broadcast suite. Forgot to say Ben's name on Thanksgiving, so it's a make good. Happy birthday, Ben. Happy birthday, Ben. First down, Giants. Tie game starting from their own 31, and Derek Ward with a leap, a gallop, and out of bounds near the 35 of Chicago. 33 yard run Tillman forced him out and another impressive carry by Derek Ward. Yeah right off this left side you know with Seibert and Deal and getting the push and then Ward being able to get inside of those blocks and then back to the outside and and Burris doing a doing a good enough job anyway on on Tillman in in the secondary so that Ward could then get up the sideline but I'll tell you Ward is having himself a heck of a first half. Already over 100 yards on the day. Manning steps up and hits Amani Toomer. First down, Giants. 12 yard completion. And Brandon McGowan was in on the stop. Interesting that McGowan Troy is starting now for Adam Archuleta, who has, in essence, been benched. He, Archuleta had a very disappointing year last year with Washington. Lovey Smith wanted him here in his defense, as he had him in his defense in St. Louis on a Super Bowl team. But Archuleta's on the bench and McGowan's a starter. Yeah, and Archuleta probably should have gotten sat down a few weeks ago. That ball just slips out of the hand of Eli Manning. They're calling it a fumble, and Chicago takes over. Anthony Adams on the recovery for Chicago, and let's take a look. But, yep, uh, open hand. I mean, they call that the open hand, and if the arm is going forward and the hand is empty, then it's a fumble, and as you could tell, the ball comes out as soon as he brings his arm back to make the throw. I mean, I know the, I know the conditions aren't that great. There's been some precipitation. 
You know, but we've seen that not just from Eli. We've seen that from a number of quarterbacks this year, and 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 it's strange because. This year they allow the quarterbacks to really rough the balls up pretty good. I mean they're broken in very very well. They're not brand new footballs that they're throwing with like what they had in previous years. And so it surprises me that sometimes the ball comes out like that. I don't know what that's about. Second Giants turnover of the day. A Manning interception now this fumble. It's big news for a Bears team that hasn't been getting takeaways like they did a year ago. But that was a gift. And now Adrian Peterson carries it for three yards on first down after the Bears take over. Well, that's a gift, and it's a it's a disappointing thing, obviously, for Eli Manning because the Giants were really doing some good things. Uh, Derek Ward running the football, Eli, you know, hitting the pass there to Toomer. They were getting a drive going and looking like they were going to be able to get points on that possession, and then only to give it to the Bears. Second and seven, more of a hurry-up attack by Chicago, just like they opened the game. And this is Olsen on the catch, Mitchell on the stop, a gain of three, third down coming up, and the Bears just go right to the line of scrimmage. They go right to the line of scrimmage, and, and I think that for the Giants defensively, I mean, this is when if you're a good defense, you get the ball right back to your offense. Manning throws down the sideline, Grossman does, and it's caught by Berrien. Madison on the tackle, what a throw by Rex Grossman. And Bernard Berrien there on the other end. 50 yards to take the ball to the Giants 15. I'm trying to figure out how Bernard Berry and even made the catch. It was good coverage by Sam Madison. I mean, you're going to see where the ball is positioned. I mean, that's pretty good coverage right there by Sam Madison, and yet Bernard Berry able to make the play. And again, the Bears get right to the line of scrimmage. Grossman steps up, dumps it off. Adrian Peterson makes a move down to the five. Back to the Bernard Berry and catch. This was one-handed, wasn't it? it? It looked like it sure was. And and he used his right arm to shield Madison just enough, got away with it, and then made the one-handed catch. And we saw that from Santana Moss a couple weeks ago there with the Redskins. It's a great play. Bernard Berry, who also had a great game in last week's win over Denver. First and goal from the five, and Peterson's going to lose a yard. Kavika Mitchell came in to make the play. It's second and goal. It's it's amazing how quickly momentum changes. I mean, the Giants had had the momentum, moving the football, all of a sudden a fumble, and then on third down, the Giants unable to get off the field, give up the big play, and now here the Bears are looking at they're going to be able to take the lead on this possession. The officials trying to do all they can to keep these two sides from getting into a fight. Well, you got you got Rex, try, you know, guys. They're playing at such a fast pace that some of the guys don't know when they're going to the line or when they need to get huddled. Rex getting them back in the huddle right before this play. Play clock at two as Grossman got the snap and throws it away. Olsen was close enough to it in the ball. Very close to Dockery defending for the Giants. It's third and goal. And Rex ends up taking a hit at the end of this play. And, and you just know that you know, when you're playing teams like the Giants with the number of sacks, just like Eli Manning's going to have today. I mean, you just know going into a game like this, it's going to be physical and you're going to take your shots. You just hang in there and get up and get ready for the next play. Third and goal. A little pump from Grossman. He's in trouble and down he goes. Michael Strahan again. Strahan really coming on after a slow start to the season with a camp holdout. And Strahan has been in on a couple. He's into the double digits on sacks now. Yeah, he's come on here over the last several games as well. And, you know, clean pocket inside. And, and Rex Grossman had room to step up. I think the one thing about Olin Krutz at center, he doesn't give up a lot of pressure, so there usually is somewhere to step up. You don't want to bail out the back end like Rex did because that's where you're going to run into these defensive ends for the Giants. 35-yard try by Cole is drilled. And the Bears are back on top. However, after the Manning fumble, the Giants defense gave up the 50-yarder to Berrien and a first and goal Chicago, and the Bears only get three.
first and goal from the five and Rex Grossman with an impressive completion of Bernard Varian on that last possession set up the field goal by gold and it's 10 7 Chicago and now Eli Manning who has turned the ball over twice today will go back to work by the way the Bears have all 10 of their points off turnovers today they had only 23 points off turnovers all season coming in that was tied for fewest in the NFL they led the league in that category last year. Bradshaw from about the 10. And the rookie Bradshaw gets it out near the 35. How has Eli Manning's day gone so far today? Through the interception to Erlacher that led to the first touchdown of the day. Missed Burris who was open. And then the last time they had it while driving using their running game to move the ball down the field. Manning lost the handle, turned it over, and the Bears went down and got three points. Yeah, well, we had said coming into the game, Joe, that, you know, after what happened last week and what he's dealt with, I mean, it's important to come into this game and, and get off to a good start, feel good about the way that he has been playing, and, and that has not happened here in this first half. But, you know, if they're able to do something here with this possession, drive down, get points on this drive prior to halftime, that'll make this team feel a lot better at half. So far Manning has only attempted eight throws on this sloppy day in Chicago and that carry by Ward was good for four Anthony Adams on the stop five out of eight the news offensively is for Derek Ward who is back after missing four games and he hasn't missed a beat 102 yards already. Yeah and, and I mean that is so important for this team because it's what they really want to do and, and again Tom Coughlin stressed it we have got to run the football better than what they had the two previous weeks and they've certainly done that here in this first half. Manning hit Hedgecock right in the numbers but Madison the fullback couldn't hang on and it's now third and six and I don't know that it would have mattered even if he had of I mean they weren't going to pick up any yardage they were right on the line of scrimmage as to where he would have been tackled and you know and that's the other part of this that I watch with this New York Giants offense is you know they take some shots down the field but there are just a lot of vertical shots for the most part and then they got a lot of the underneath throws that they tried. I don't see them really going after that 15 to 20 yard area where you know some big plays can be made with some high percentage throws. Third and six. Play clock expiring. Just get it away. A toss to Ward running right. Brought down short of first down yardage. So they don't want Manning throwing it on third and long. They'd rather have Ward run it. And it's not enough fourth down. Well, that's the second time they've done that here in this first half to where it's been really a passing down on third down. And they've tried to, to run a draw or run a quick sweep and pick up the first down. And th those are hard distances to pick up in those situations. And you know it, it does look like that Kevin Gilbride as the play caller is trying to protect Eli a little bit in how he's calling the game. So here's Hester. Another chance. Fiegel's angles toward the sideline hits a good punt with a lot of air under it and drives Hester back near his own end zone. Good coverage downfield. And forced out at the 10 after a 53 yard punt is Hester by Chase Blackburn. Well, Fiegel's is as good as there is in the National Football League at directional kicking the ball. I mean, that that sounds like it's easy to do, and I know that fans out there would say, oh, yeah, you know, just punt it away from Hester, but in an attempt to try to punt it away from him, then you're worried about the ball coming off the side of your foot, but that punt that he just had was absolutely textbook. That's the old coffin corner that you don't hear a lot about anymore. He just put it in there. He's one of the few guys that seems to even bother to try at that coffin corner. And here's a guy with all three punts have been down inside the 20, over 500 in his career. Number one in the history of the NFL in punts and punt yardage. Good guy to have when you're facing a team with Devin Hester. Here is Peterson over the right side and out to the 15 yard line. Gain of five. 
Yeah, and really not a lot different from their huddling now. But, you know, right now with two and a half minutes to play in this half, they have two timeouts. And because of where they're at on the field, I'm, I'm sure that they want to see what happens here on second down or whether or not they're able to pick up a first down. And my guess is if they do, they will then get into a no huddle, as we've seen for much of the first half. Second and five, and the pass to Musin Muhammad. Hit from behind and dropped at the 35 yard line. And that will likely take us to the two minute warning in Chicago. With as Troy said, two timeouts left. Get the big 21 yard completion from Rex Grossman to Musin Muhammad. They have the lead with two minutes left in the half. It's easy to throw all the focus on. Rex Grossman's playing for a lot here down the stretch, not just team-wise, but he admitted to you that he does think about where he might be next year, and depending on how he finishes, he could be back here, maybe with the Bears, could have a big contract, could have a relatively cheap contract. If he fizzles down the stretch, it could be a Joey Harrington-type situation. As he spins, gets out of trouble, and oh throws God. it right through the hands of <laughs> McKee, the fullback, and Aikman's giggling for the little spinorama that Rex Grossman did right in the oh, middle of the pocket. Pretty funny stuff. I mean, he had some pressure. He did a little whirly bird in the pocket, you're going to see. And then I, I don't even know how he knew Jason McKee was out here. I mean, he just turns and throws it before he gets blasted. There by Fred Robbins. So it's second and ten. Giants defense trying to get the ball back. You can hear the wind. Its effect on our microphones. The wind is really picked up as Peterson gets it. Now the Giants could use a timeout defensively if they wish. They have three remaining and the clock is stopped. Who stopped it? The Giants did. So while we he ran the ball again today and Tavares Jackson I mean you can see his maturation occurring here over the last couple of weeks also third down and nine for Chicago and the pass to Rasheed Davis complete first down at the Chicago 49 well and as I expected now Chicago's going into their no huddle I mean had they not have been able to do anything there they'd have been content just punt the ball but the Giants call the timeout. Chicago gets the first down, and here they go. Grossman looking for somewhere to go, and he drops it to Peterson. About even with Grossman when he let it fly, a seven-yard gain. Dahl on the stop for the Giants. And it's second down and short with over a minute to play, second and three. complete to Davis first down Chicago and he lunges inside the 40 to the 38 and the Bears will use one of their two remaining timeouts Grossman didn't want to but Desmond yeah. Clark called it yeah I, I can understand why Rex Grossman would not want to use a timeout they really had the Giants defensively on their heels and why you would then burn a timeout to allow them to regroup I could see where Rex wouldn't want that to happen they threw a flag right at the very end of the play as the tackle was being completed. But we I was looking down there it was Desmond Clark definitely for one maybe Muhammad who called for timeout and Grossman was shocked. There is no foul for delay of game for holding the player down Chicago they called their second team timeout. So now the Bears have a first down. Send the game into overtime last week against Denver, and then the games before that. He really has played at a pretty high level since coming back. 16 of 21 in this half, 194 yards, a touchdown. A little pump fake, and behind the defense, but overthrown is Bernard Berrien. Grossman, who has completed passes to seven different receivers, had Varian, but overshot him. Had a chance. Good call there by Ron Turner. Two guys really over there trying to slow Bernard Varian down, but there's the play fake. Try to get the defensive back to bite. Sam Madison in man coverage never saw it, but the safety Michael Johnson did. Bernard Varian was able to get in behind Madison and just, just missed a touchdown there. 
Grossman, Muhammad overthrown. Wind, a wet ball, and Grossman's all fired up. Third down and ten, shaking his head. Got a little jump to his step, and now it's third down and ten for the Bears. Yeah, I think on that last play, you know, the first shot that he had to Berrien was a good shot. He had a chance. On that last one, he did not. And considering where they're at on the field, you know, had he have just been able to come down and check it down, you know, then he's able to at least try to get into a position for goal to get a field goal here before the end of the half. Inside the 15. And Rex isn't wanting to burn a timeout here either, and I agree with it. he's going to clock it and save the timeout. That's a good job on his part. So now it gives him the entire field to work to try to come away with a touchdown before the half. And here's the play. As you see Adrian Peterson, it's an inside screen. It was a screen the whole way, that middle screen. You know, get the pass rush up inside. Rex Grossman's been getting some pressure all throughout this first half. And then dump it off to Adrian Peterson with nobody there in the middle. Grossman has completed on third and nine and third and ten on this drive. Bears have been 0 for 13 on third and five or more over the last two weeks. And that is over the head of Masin Muhammad with 19 seconds left. It's second and 10. It's a good decision on Rex. It over his head stops the clock. It's now third and 10. As they clock the ball on the first down, the incompletion makes it third and 10. The ball just inside the 20. Ron Turner trying to dial up the right play for Chicago. Well, he's dialed up a lot of good ones here in the first 30 minutes. Grossman in trouble, and Umaniera brings him down. That's the second time that has happened this half. And with the clock under 10, the Bears will use their last timeout and go for the field goal. Yeah, and, that, and again, I mean, that's the that's the one thing that we've seen from Rex Grossman that you just can't do. I mean, you can't bail out on the backside with depth against these defensive ends. You have to step up inside, and he gave up a lot of field position there on the attempt for the field goal. You can't make that move there. You've got to try to get inside, and as we've seen, the interior guys with, with Olin Krutz and you know, and the other guys at Terrence Metcalf, Roberto Garza, those three guys inside have done a good job of not allowing a lot of inside pressure. First sack on the road for Human Yura, whose first 10 came at Giant Stadium and for New York. They've got five sacks today, one by Madison, one by Strahan, Robbins, Justin Tuck, and now Human Yura. And now with three seconds left, it'll be a 46-yard try for Gold. Who hit from you 35 got earlier? You got the center. Good snap, good hold, and the kick by Gold is good to make it a six point game. Robbie Gold is two for two. He won the game in overtime last week here at home over Denver. 13 to 7, Chicago out in front after one half of play at Soldier Field. Visa halftime show coming up right after this. Down for Chicago on their first possession. Now it's Devin Hester. In the words of Lawrence Tynes, who kicks away for the Giants. We are not dumb tough. We all like to be tough, but we're not dumb tough, and I'm not, meaning Tynes. It is not his objective to kick it anywhere near Devin Hester. Instead, he kicks it out of bounds, and there's the fear factor of Devin Hester. In essence, on a windy day in Tyne's defense, the Giants would rather Chicago get it at the 40. Out of bounds. Ball will be placed well, 30 yards from the spot of the kick. Joe, I don't think that that's what Tynes was trying to do. I mean, you say dumb, tough, and all that, and I understand what you're saying, but you know that's that's pretty dumb what just happened, giving the ball to the Bears on the 40-yard line. And as we said, Tom Coughlin said, "Hey, this is a game about field position." Well, now you're giving the Bears great field position to start this second half. It is the fear of what 
The other option is, which is Hester with the ball in his hands and that good blocking in front of him, part of a terrific Dave Tobe special teams approach. And so angling that one off to the side, it either got away from Tynes or just headed out of bounds because of the wind. Let's go down to the field and check in with Pam. Go. Okay, sorry, Joe. I just lost IFB. That's okay. Um, Tom Coughlin kind of accentuating the positive for his team, saying that he looked up at the scoreboard, saying we're not that far out of it. We get something going in this quarter. We'll get our momentum right back. Meantime, Levy Smith sort of brushing off the significance of those five sacks on Rex Grossman. He said that the Giants are just a good pass for his team, and you expect that. But his own defense, he says, has to shore up its efforts in the rush game. Back yeah. to you. All right, Pam. That one's nearly picked off by James Butler, who got his right hand on it it's third down and seven and so Pam's dealing with the elements and we can hear the wind hitting our microphones down there the rain has stopped and it rained all morning and was pounding down they didn't take the tarp off this field until 65 minutes before kickoff players barely got a chance to warm up now the wind is picked up on what is a very cold afternoon here in Chicago third and seven. Grossman fires Rasheed Davis can't make the connection it's fourth down and a quick three and out for the Chicago offense well, that's a good job by this Giants defense I mean here they give the Bears great field position on the 40 yard line and then to force a three and out and now give the ball back to their own offense that's that's a nice job there defensively. Maynard will punt the quarters waits deep. Good punt. Spiral turns over and McCorders from inside the 15. Across the 20 and that was it. They're going to mark him right at the 20. Gilmore on the stop. Seven yard return. Eli Manning and the Giants offense to the field down by six. Let's build something together. All the mascots doing the soldier boy in the end zone to our right in the Giants. <laughs> receiving today that that may tell a story in a roundabout way I mean the Giants have had the ball Troy six possessions Manning has thrown nine passes we'll keep an eye and thoughts on the play calling here to see how much they want to put it in Eli's hands down by six starting at the 20 and Derek Ward lost the football Chicago has it. Gunlier comes away with the football. He's had a forced fumble in three straight games, and we'll get a look at the replay and see who exactly knocked it out. Yeah, we weren't able to see exactly who it was that was able to strip Ward with the ball. May have been a Gunlier. If so, that's his fourth straight game with a forced fumble and three turnovers. See if it's number 93. He's coming in on the back side if in fact it was him and it, and it sure was. He got in there with the right arm as he was making the tackle. And as you said Joe he's had one in each of the last four games now and you know he's playing now at the level that they had hoped that he would when he joined the team a few years ago. He's getting pressure on the quarterback having you know really his best season in a Bears uniform. Picked him up from Miami, Chicago did, as Peterson gets it and doesn't do much with it. Picks up one. And Agunle has not been a pro bowler since coming to Chicago, but this may be his year. And for Adewale, who spends the offseason working out and training with Osiyu Minura, the defensive end on the other side, and Mark Anderson, a little bit of a battle there for pride. And Agunle just made a great play, a forced fumble. And a fumble recovery. It's second and nine for Chicago. Peterson almost broke it. About a yard shy of a first down. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. What a guy job. <laughs> hey, I crack myself up sometimes. I've been sitting beside Terry too long. Ernest Graham runs it in from 25 yards out. 
TB says it with love. Don't worry about it. It's 20 to 14 Tampa Bay on top of New Orleans right now. Joe and Troy, get me out of this. All right, you're <laughs> out officially, and you look at what McCown has done. 21 of 24 playing for the injured Jeff Garcia, who's got a bad back. 255 yards and a touchdown. Here is Peterson. There is a first down, Chicago. You know, a Tampa Bay team, if they're able to win this game against New Orleans today, I mean, it, it's conceivable they could finish out 12 and 4. I mean, you look at their schedule and you say, who else is going to beat them? But, you know, to get back to this game, Joe, the, the way that the Bears have been built and the way that the Bears were able to have their success last year, you know, running the football, playing great defense, creating turnovers, they're getting that on the defensive side of the ball here today. They're getting the turnovers. They're playing very, very well there. They're not running the ball as well, but Rex Grossman's making up for that the way that he has thrown it. Peterson gets a couple. The Bears are, are doing defensively here today and winning this game defensively the way they rode to the Super Bowl last year under Lovey Smith. And while last week wasn't pretty in the overall numbers, Lovey Smith thought his defense played actually well. They gave up some big plays, no doubt. But on a play-by-play -play basis, he feels like they're starting to, to figure things out. And I agree with him because you watch them. I mean, they've always played hard. And last week, watching that game, they played exceptionally hard. You know, they just haven't gotten some of the breaks that maybe they had gotten in previous years. Some of the injuries obviously have affected them. But today, they put it together, and they're playing very well. Second down and eight, Peterson. Short of a first down by a couple, and now flag comes in at the end of the play. After the play was over and the whistles had blown. See if it's against Chicago for a little extra block at the end. Well, and that's what the Giants players are indicating, that it's going to be against the Bears. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, 60 on the offense, need the player while he was down. It's a 15-yard penalty. It'll be third down. Boy, that is a killer penalty instead of a manageable third down. It marches the ball all the way back to the 23. Well, he's right at the end here. You're going to see him right here. See what happens. Sure enough, I mean, pretty easy. You got officials all around him, and it's Kavika Mitchell is who he is who he needs there at the end. So that was enough to get a 15 yard flag and now it's third down and 19. Grossman in trouble and can't connect with Peterson. So for the third time in this game the Bears have been moving it. They've been down inside the red zone and this time instead of a sack it's a penalty on Metcalf that marches the ball back and Chicago has to settle for a field goal try. And that's why to go back to what Tom Coughlin said to Pam Oliver coming out at halftime is that, you know, hey, this is it's a six point game. You know, it's still a close game. And, and the reason that it is is for the reasons that you just said, Joe. 41 yard try here for Gold who's two for two. And one of the better kickers in the NFL. Dealing with the wind and the elements. Man, that thing just got over the crossbar. Hit a wall of wind. Here's the fumble that set it up. Adewalia Gunlier knocked it out, grabbed it. Bears at three, lead by nine. Outside of that first possession where Chicago went down the field and threw the touchdown pass from Grossman to Desmond Clark. Done a good job in the red zone. However, Chicago trying to even their record at six and six. Leading by nine. And all of the points today by Chicago off turnovers. What a difference this week for the Bears defensively. Leading to their 13 points. And now what a play as Bradshaw returns at 17 yards. And he was drilled by Jamar Williams. So Eli Manning and the offense back to the field. It's a nine point Chicago lead. Nissan and they're trailing here by nine and at the start of the day they are in the driver's seat in that wild card chase in the NFC but 
They've got some teams gaining on them, notably the Minnesota Vikings and the Bears, who are trying to get to six and six. Manning, nowhere to go, and down he goes. Mark Anderson was there. Anthony Adams as well. Well, that time Eli Manning, he just didn't have anywhere to go with the football. You see Plexico Burris, and he's working against Charles Tillman. And he and it looked like he was trying to go here to Jeremy Shockey on the corner route, but pretty good coverage there by McGowan. And then time just runs out on Eli Manning and nowhere to go. Lucky to hang on to the football after getting that hit from behind by Anderson. Second down and 18. Shockey still does not have a catch. Drops it off. Shockey now has a catch. Now he has to run with it. Lowers his head. Picks up seven. Erlacher on the stop. And the question is pretty simple. I mean, what does Eli have to do? What does this Giants offense have to do to, to get something rolling here? Well, you know, here's what I know is I, I know there's been some turnovers and, and that has to stop, but and they've run the ball pretty well. I mean, the way that Ward has done, especially in the first half, and but You've got to be able to throw the football. You've got to make some plays in the passing game if you're going to be able to score points in this league. And and right now, I mean, it's not just Eli Manning either. I mean, as we saw, the, the, even when he has time to throw, there's not a lot of separation being created by these receivers. This one has dropped off short of Shockey. Pressure by Tommy Harris. And so now that's a drive that goes literally backward down by nine. And the Bears leading are about to get the ball back. Well, and you can see why, you know, it's it's fr it's frustrating for everybody. I mean, I have been on offensive teams that went through what this Giants team is currently going through, and it's hard. It's hard on the play caller. It's hard on the quarterback. It's hard on the it's hard on everyone because nobody's just playing loose. I mean, everybody's so tight about every single snap. Hester gets a chance to return one. And not much room to run as he is brought down at the Chicago 44. Good field position for the team that leads by nine. Eli Manning under pressure on that last possession that did nothing for the Giants. Bears have the ball and the lead. Bears in this quarter, their own 40 at the Giants 24, and now their own 44. Great field position. Adrian Peterson over the right side has a bit of the edge and gets it out to midfield. Don't forget we have the OT to talk about the NFL right after this game and then immediately following the OT you'll get the matchups for the BCS Bowl Championship Series games right here on Fox before you will anywhere else. College football's biggest games and you'll have the matchups following the OT after football here and the Bears have it right at midfield leading by nine second and four. Hand off to Peterson and he is eventually wrapped up. Jay Alford missed the initial tackle a loss of five as Justin Tuck cleaned it up. Yeah, Justin Tuck I'll tell you he has really had a heck of a season and here's Alford in the middle and the pressure that he's able to get. And he's done well also. I, you know, the opportunities that he has had, he's very active in the middle. And, and Justin Tuck, who rotates at that defensive end position with O.C. Eumanure and then Michael Strahan, you know, he has really been good. I mean, been good all season long. I don't want to say he surprised anybody, but they have been glad that he's been a part of this defense. On third and nine, that one almost skipped into Devin Hester and a good play out there by Dockery, who got the start today. And that drive by Chicago went backward. Yeah, all of a sudden the second half has become a real defensive battle with both both defensive units playing pretty good football. A drive that started at the 44 stalls just outside the Chicago 40. And McCorders would love to come up with a big return as Maynard punts it into the wind. Say, I don't know if that's good defensive football or just bad offensive football, but either way, not a lot of movement. Line drive punt. That's what Maynard wanted. That's what he got from inside the 15. Dockery. Rather, McCorders out to the 25, and that's as far as he goes. So, R.W. McCorders, a 12-yard return. 
Giants offense back to the field as they trail by nine. Giants have started since 2003. This is before Coughlin even got there. 27 and 13, games nine through 16. A 257 win percentage, nine and 26. They fizzled last year in the second half of the season. Here's another fumble. Trying to get it to Ward. Agunlier was in there on that play again for Chicago, and it stays with the Giants. That was almost crushing. Erlacher comes out of there with a football, but they have already motioned that it belongs to the Giants. Erlacher's behind everybody with a ball. Yeah, he's wondering, how can it be the Giants' ball when I'm the one standing here holding it? You know, you're right. Agunlier, again, comes in with the right arm, right hand, knocks it out of war. And there and it right, is. Yeah, and Michael Matthews is there on top of the ball. Erlacher then pulls it out late, but I'll tell you what, now, if you're over there and you're Kevin Gilbride and you're saying, hey, we're trying to protect a quarterback that's in a little bit of a slump, and now we're not even able to give the ball to the guy who's been running the ball so well because he's put it on the ground the last two times he's had it. Second down and 10. They do go back to Ward, and Ward pushes the pile. A game of seven. Let's go for a game break and Kurt Menefee. All right, more nip tuck between the Bucks and Saints. Luke McCown picked off by Mike McKenzie. He takes it back 53 yards for the score. It's McKenzie's third interception of the year. He's returned two of them for touchdowns. This one gives the Saints a one-point lead. Back to Joe, Troy, and Pam. All right, Kurt, thanks. And a chance for New Orleans to get to the 500 mark at 6-6. Six and six. Be a game behind Tampa Bay. There's Shockey at the top of your screen on third and three. They go underneath to the other tight end, and the pass is caught by Kevin Boss. His first catch of the day and a four-yard gain for a first down. You know, when you really look at this Giants offense, Joe, and you and you say, you know, who is a defense? Who do you really have to concern yourself with? I mean, there's there's nobody really that threatens you. I mean, usually when you look at any offensive unit, you say, man, we've got to do something about this guy. You know, in New England, that's Randy Moss. In Dallas, that's Terrell Owens. Or, you know, you can go across the board. But with the Giants, who is that guy? Plexico Burris, he can't run like he used to. Jeremy Shockey, he's not a deep threat that's going to hurt anybody. And so the whole defense starts playing a lot closer to the line of scrimmage, and everything becomes harder. Here's Ward. Out to the 40. And Lovey Smith will tell you it's good news for a defense when the biggest threat is a tight end on the other side. And part of that, as we've said already in this game, is the injury to Burris. That's why Burris is here. He's here to be the big receiver and the big downfield threat. But he's got a bad knee, a bad ankle. He doesn't practice, and he really hasn't been a factor over the last five games. And I think that's why the injury to Steve Smith is magnified and then the development of Sonoris Moss. Second and seven. Sonoris Moss at the bottom of the picture. Fake handoff penalty flag on the play. And underneath, it's Ward getting it into Chicago territory. But a flag is down. And it's an offside against Chicago, so the play will stand. Offside, 97, defense. A penalty decline. Play results in a first down. A nice gain on that underneath throw to Derek Ward. Yeah, and when you're able to get big chunks like that, regardless of how it comes about, whether it's underneath to a back and everybody's run off or outside to a wide receiver, I mean, those are the types of plays that ultimately lead to points, whether that's field goals or touchdowns. It is very hard in the National Football League to sustain drives without getting big chunks at some point in a possession. Toss to Bradshaw, tripped up. Lance Briggs in on the tackle, and he had help. But let's say this. I like what Gilbride's done on this particular drive. It hasn't been risky. It's been pretty conservative, but they threw the one four-yard completion on third down and three to Kevin Boss, a backup tight end, fake a handoff to Ward out of the backfield, dump it to him over the middle. 
very conservative but effective for Gilbride. Yeah, and when they work and when they're effective, everybody likes it. You know, I mean, the play caller is really good when the plays are actually being executed and guys are catching the football and moving the ball. Second and eight. This could be a free play. Looked like Chicago came across prior to the snap. Offside, 91, defense, five yard penalty, still second down. Tommy Harris, who's been dealing with a bad knee, bad groin during the season, tried to get a jump, and it brings up second and three. Yeah, Tommy Harris, I mean, he really hasn't been healthy all season long. In addition to the injuries you mentioned, he's also dealing with a back injury. And even though he's pretty much been banged up since the start of the season, he still is having a career year in terms of sacks. Second down and three. Derek Ward takes a seat at the 35. Gain of only one. Erlacher in there to make the play. They've been talking a lot about Brian Erlacher and an arthritic back for the middle linebacker of the Chicago defense in the middle of everything. And he'll try to help stuff it on third and one. Handoff is to Ruben Drones and he falls forward. It depends on the spot. Spot looks inches short according to our line. Initially, watching the play live, it looked like drones got over the top and had enough, but where they marked the football, he could be inches short, and a decision would be coming for the Giants, and I would imagine they'll try and pound it if they don't have enough. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a decision really to be made. I mean, where the ball's at right now on the field, I, I think you're definitely going for it here on fourth down. Extra tight end comes in, Michael Matthews, and it's fourth down and less than a yard for the Giants who trail by nine. And then just to clarify that, if the Giants were in a position to where they thought they had a very makeable, reasonable field goal opportunity, I think you kick the field goal. But because of where they're at on the 34, 35 yard line, I mean, that makes it a pretty, pretty lengthy attempt. I think going for it here on fourth and one is the right thing to do. gets to the edge plenty dumped at the 25 yard line Danielle Manning on the stop but once Ruben drones got it outside an easy first down and a conversion on fourth down for New York yeah, and you look at the outside what you're going to see is Kevin boss right here does a heck of a job actually it's Madison Hedgecock I'm sorry but he does a heck of a job by securing the edge which then allows Ruben Drones to get outside because initially that's not where Drones was going to go. He wanted to go inside of that block. But because Hedgecock was able to stay on his block, he was able to secure the edge for Drones. Play action. Shockey. First down inside the 10. They mark Shockey at the 7. And other than that little drop-off pass to Jeremy, that's his first catch down the field. Yeah, this is pretty good here. They had a chance in the seam there to, to Jeremy Shockey, and if they're able to get it to him and allow him to keep his feet, you know, there's a chance that he's then able to run that ball into the end zone. 18-yard completion, the longest completion of the day for Eli Manning, first and goal. Ward to the five. Erlacher on the tackle, second and goal. It's a good drive here by the Giants, as you said, Joe, the way that they're mixing it up and hitting some underneath passes, some high percentage things, and then running the football, converting on the first downs. I mean, not a lot of big plays, but they've been pretty methodical in the way in which they've gone about it. Career day for Ward. They try Ward left side, trying to get to the edge. Not 
going to make it as Adewale Agunlea was out there to make the stop and he had teammates with him. It's third and goal with under a minute to play here in the third quarter. And again, it's Madison Hedgecock. Watch him at fullback. You just don't see a lot of true fullbacks in the league anymore, but you know, you can tell that Ward likes getting in behind him and for a tailback to be able to get behind a fullback that they believe is going to make the block. I mean, that gives that guy a great deal of confidence in running the football. Hedgecock's been able to secure quite a few blocks on this possession. Third and goal. Play action. Manning avoids a sack for Burris. Picked off. Tillman. They're blowing the play dead as Tillman goes down the field. It's a touchback, but no points as Manning throws another pick. I think Eli Manning, he's just pressing a little bit, Joey. He, he does a great job of getting out of the sack, but Tillman had position. The only chance he had for the touchdown was if he threw it high enough you know, there it is, Alex Brown coming in, and he's able to get off of him. And then he throws basically a, a jump ball. But look at the position that Tillman has. And he's just hoping that he can get it high enough to give Burris an opportunity, but he wasn't able to. Burris was backing up. And so the point at which Eli threw it had to be a lot higher than what Eli thought when he let it go. So now taking over at their own 20 are the Bears, who still lead by nine. Down the field, it's Desmond Clark. Perfect throw. And a big lift for Chicago as the third quarter comes to an end. They get the interception in the end zone. And on the very next play, 45 yards from Rex Grossman to Desmond Clark. Tillman gets the pick. 45 yards to Clark. Back after this from your local Fox station. Or sent to your phone at the speed of light. This is the NFL at sprint speed. First play, fourth quarter, and a good play by Reggie Torber as he brings down Jason McKee. No gain on the play. Second down and ten. And this Giants defense has to do it again. That was a killer interception thrown by Eli Manning with his team down by nine, trying to force it to Plexico Burris. And instead of at the very least coming away with three points to make it a six-point game, the Bears turn around and have the ball at the 36-yard line of the Giants. Second down and ten. Manning now has thrown more interceptions than touchdowns, and that'll be five yards against Chicago. Full start, 88, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. It's Desmond Clark who has the only touchdown of the day for Chicago. Well, right now, I mean, if you're Giants defensively, you're just hoping that you don't give up anything more than a field goal. I mean, that in and of itself would be a would be a pretty good defensive possession here for them. And now with them getting backed up, with the Bears getting backed up, you know, if they're able to come out of this giving up no points, that'd be a great job. Pressure up front, a screen to Peterson. And what a terrific play by Kavika Mitchell. If Peterson gets away from Mitchell, it has a chance of being a big play. Instead, it's a gain of only one, third down and 16, and the Bears are not in field goal range. Yeah, because he had some space out in front of him. You're right, Joe, and Kavika Mitchell, this isn't an easy job either. I mean, to make, to make that tackle out in the open field. You know, against Adrian Peterson, you see the move that Peterson tried putting on him, but he's able to get just enough of the jersey there to pull him to the ground. Kavika Mitchell leading this Giants defense with nine tackles today. That was a big one. It's now third and 16. Off his back foot, Grossman lets it go and overthrows Bernard Berrien. And that is a very impressive job by this Giants defense led by first-year coordinator Steve Spagnolo. 
to hold there. The five yard penalty certainly didn't help on the false start by Clark and now it's a punt. And what I like about what Steve Spagnuolo has done is he's not been afraid to bring pressure. On the last play he brought R.W. McCorders off the edge. One on one outside. Bernard Berrien had a step but you got to make the completion. Of course they give up the big play to Desmond Clark that got him down here but not giving up any points and keeping this team in it. Great job by the Giants defensively. McCorders will let it go over his head and it goes into the end zone. Bears had a player down there. That was Graham, but he slipped and fell. Was in position to down it. Now he is injured after losing his footing down near the goal line. So the Giants have it down by nine. They'll start at their 20. Giants offensive leaders. Manning has turned the ball over three times with two interceptions. The latest one in the Bears end zone. 129 yards, a couple of fumbles for Ward, and three catches. Amani Toomer, the leading receiver for the Giants, down by nine. Bradshaw out of the backfield, and Eli Manning throws a rocket over to him, and Bradshaw slipping. It's incomplete. You know, I go back to kind of what I said before, Joe, and that is, you know, those throws are fine, but. And it is hard. It is really hard when you run a lot of short passes, a lot of swing passes, as we've seen from the Giants, and then not getting the defense off you. I mean, you, you got to be able to threaten them down the field. I know Plexico can't run very well, but straight line running, he tends to do pretty good. And maybe you can put Sonoris Moss and let him run straight down the field, but you got to start working that 15 to 20 yard range if you're going to open up anything else underneath. Play action from Manning and the pass out of the reach of Burris. Burris had a spot, was open, and Manning didn't hit him. It's third and ten. Yeah, actually a pretty good route there by Plexico Burris, and, and Eli's gonna, gonna get turned off the play action. You see the lane that he's got there to throw it to him, and it's just one that gets away from him. I think you can tell that, that Burris is a little pained as he's running off the line because of the injuries, but you know, those throws are, you know, those are throws that and whether that's Eli or Plexico not being where he thinks he's going to be, what, it doesn't matter. You have to be able to complete those passes. Third down and ten. Manning trying to make a play. Incomplete. Briggs was waiting there for Derek Ward. Look, fans for the Giants get frustrated when they see that look by Manning. And you always get in trouble when you read body language and you try to determine how much somebody cares from a distance. But with fans throwing stuff around their living room watching this Giants offense just be inept here against the Chicago defense they get frustrated with the reactions with the missed open receivers. Yeah, I, I think they're more frustrated with the play more so than the demeanor. Fiegels hits it. Hester watches it take a bounce. So more of the same from Eli Manning. Had a rough week last week against Minnesota. It's not a whole lot better today. Talking with Kevin Gilbride with the Giants still trailing by nine. The defense has played well. No in a rather precarious predicament for these Giants who are watching the rest of the field gain on them in the wild card chase. Great opportunity today for Chicago to get to 500 only a game behind the Giants in the wild card chase as Peterson goes over the right side and picks up only two. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. All right, Joe, about a dozen or so Bears and Giants players will be switching gears emotionally as they get ready to fly directly to Miami for the funeral of Sean Taylor after the game. For the Giants, a contingent of players like Jeremy Shockey, Plexico Burris, Antonio Pierce will travel by a charter plane that the team is providing for Chicago meantime. Devin Hester and Greg Olson will have to hustle to make the last commercial flight out of Chicago. Back to you. All right, Pam. That'll be happening with players across this league on this night. That carries Barry and out of bounds. There's no doubt the wind is playing a factor for both quarterbacks as that was just thrown away meaning picked up by a gust of wind and just took off on Rex Grossman. It's now third and eight. You, know, you got to give this Giants defense some credit for the job that they've done. I mean again the, the Bears getting good field position and 
and at least getting into a third and long. But you know, the Giants have held up without a lot of help from the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, they really have, and they've done it today. There's another false start. This one, St. Clair, it looked like. Giants have done it today without a couple of starters, Jabril Wilson and Aaron Ross. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. So that moves the ball back to the 43-yard line of Chicago. I know it's been hard on Chicago offensively, as it has been all season long. I mean, they're without Cedric Benson today. They're not running the football all that effectively again today, as has been the case. You know, you got Devin Hester again here on the outside, hoping that maybe he can do something for you. Kevin Dockery lined up across from him. Grossman throws sideline and out of the reach of Berrien again. Berrien's been able to find some holes and get behind the defense. Grossman's missed him a few times in this game. And it brings up fourth down. So again, the Giants defensively, they keep giving their offense a chance to do something, but the Giants have not been able to move the ball this half. Yeah, they really tough, toughened up because, you know, I mean, you think about how good Chicago offensively was doing there in the first half, over 200 yards of offense. Here in the second half, you know, the Giants have, have done a good job of slowing them down. Maynard hits it. Porters will stay away. And it's down at the 25. 32 yard punt, nothing on the return. 25 yard line is where the Giants will start, still trailing by nine. And there at the end of that musical piece, Charles Tillman, his second interception in as many weeks, in the Bears' end zone, two possessions ago. It's still a nine point game, plenty of time left. Here's one down the middle of the field, Omani Toomer, a good throw from Eli Manning, a completion of 18 yards. Erlacher downfield to make the stop. And a game summary, Eli Manning with two more interceptions today, six in the last two games. Grossman has not thrown a pick, and here's that hurry up by the Giants. They get to it, they hand a Ward, and Derek Ward adds to his career best total. Adds eight more yards, it's second and two. You know, at other times during the year, they, they've gotten into some of the no huddle stuff, and it's worked very well, and Eli has run it very well, and now they're going to that, the hurry up offense now. I mean, they're two scores down. There's a little under 11 minutes, there's still time. It's not something they have to do, but it's probably a good thing because Eli's been struggling and try to get him out of that by going to the no huddle offense. Saw that last graphic on the game summary. Five sacks today by this good Giants defense. First down by Ward as he gets it just outside the Chicago 45. And you mentioned, Joe, the interception by Eli in the end zone to, to Charles Kelman. And obviously significant because you, you miss out on an opportunity to at least get a field goal. More significant because that would have cut it then to a one possession ball game, whereas right now at nine points, it's a two possession game. First down, Giants. Pass complete. That's Plexico Burris. And it depends on the spot as to whether it's enough for a first down. Erlacher there to make the stop. You know, now you take a look at this, and you're going to see basically the same thing we saw earlier, where he's got a clean lane and makes a perfect throw, and you got Burris working back to the ball. I mean, those are the types of things that if Burris was able to practice on a daily basis, I think we would see that kind of consistency between those two a lot more. But because he doesn't, you know, that's why we see all of the inconsistencies, not just in this game, but in other weeks. This is going to be a false start on Kevin false Boss. False start, 89, offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. And now one of those five-yard penalties just really hurts the Giants' attack. They're in second and one. They can do what they want. Now it's second and six. It's a different, whole different situation. Changes everything, Joe. I mean, it's an absolute killer. It's second and one. You can go play action, come back if you don't hit it, and get the first down on third and one. You know, now it's still a good down and distance, but not nearly as good as second and one. The OT presented by Lowe's. The All-State BCS Selection Show coming up after this game. Another flag flies, and Manning ripped down by Darwin Walker. 
But a flag came in at the start of the play. And it looks like the Giants are going to get that five yards All right back. 55 defense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's Lance Briggs. So now back to the second and one. You can see Lance Briggs. He's right there in the middle. He was bluffing anyway. He was backing out of there. Was showing blitz and came too far. Second and one. Here's Ward. And Ward, it looks like, has enough for a first down. McGowan on the tackle. First down, New York, down by nine with under nine to play. And that's a pretty good indicator when an offense is struggling, when at second and one, you don't take a shot, you know, down the field and try to get a little bit creative because you're not sure if at third and one, you're going to be able to make it. Manning throws and... Here's Eli Manning and Sonoris Moss not on the same page. Well, and I, and I think that, you know, from what I gather, that's probably on Sonoris Moss. And, and, you know, he has not gotten a chance to play a lot. But, you know, in talking with people of the organization, you see how he's running. And, and I could tell Eli Manning just wanted him to turn around, throttle that thing down. No one's covering you. And let's just get an easy completion. But, you know, those are some of the perplexing things that Sonoris Moss is doing that's keeping him from playing more. is to Ward and Derek Ward is doing all he can picks up eight and again to bring up what you were talking about earlier the injury to Steve Smith first a scapula a break and then a hamstring problem is what has Sonoris Moss on the field quick snap and Ward has another big Giants first down they almost caught Chicago with too many men on the field, which would have been an easy first down. And now Ward is hurt. And grabbing at his left leg. Well, I know he's had the, the two fumbles today, but you know, he has really run the ball hard, and he's, finished, he's finishing the runs and has done a good job. He just got a first down. That ball's coming loose, too. Mm. Left ankle took a big hit. First down, New York, ball inside the Chicago 25, Manning down the middle and a big hit. A flag is coming as Shockey was drilled downfield by Brandon McGowan. Well, <laughs> wasn't a lot of question about that one, was there? I mean, you see Jeremy Shockey, he's going up the seam and... Pass interference, <laughs> 36, defense. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. First down. Only problem was the back judge reached for his flag and whiffed. It. Yeah, he couldn't get the flag out of his pocket, and that's why Shockey got up and didn't immediately see the flag and thought that they weren't going to make the call. So it sets up first and goal. Giants need a touchdown. Working this fourth quarter into the wind. Manning steps up and throws incomplete. McBride flashed in front. Tyree, the intended receiver. I tell you what, and Eli's, Eli's fortunate that he threw that ball high. I'm not sure that he saw Trumaine McBride, but it, if he had thrown it to where his guy could have caught it, McBride would have been the one intercepting it. I mean, you're going to see here, trying to throw it into Tyree in the corner. But if he were to get that ball down to where Tyree could have caught it, but McBride has the interception. Second and goal. This is Drones on the handoff to the six. A gain of only one, it's third down and goal, and we have seen different stretches within this game where Kevin Gilbride will make calls where it looks like he'd rather hand the ball off than put the ball in the hands of Eli Manning on a couple of third downs in the first half. And on that last call, what's it going to be on third and goal? Well, I think you got to take a shot to the end zone. I mean, he had the interception, but you, know, you, you you've got to give him a chance here to get a touchdown on this possession. Manning a little 
pump throws. It is incomplete. Amani Toomer says he caught it. The officials say it skipped in, and Amani Toomer was wide open. Yeah, well, it's going to be close, and it's just a matter of, you know, how if he did catch it, is there enough there to where they're able to change it? Now, let's just see if he caught it, first of all. He's got his hands underneath, and, and I mm. think he did. I, I mean, it looked too. like he had his hands and his arms on the ground, and the ball came in. But is there enough there to where they'll be able to then overturn Giants this call? We're challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. There's no doubt it's skipped, but I think you could make the argument that it's skipped along the arms of Amani Toomer and into his chest. But as you say, is there enough to overturn it? It's being challenged by Tom Coughlin, and we've looked at it as close as we can. Maybe after it hits him in the chest, if it comes back down and hits the grass. Just too tough to tell. Yeah, and it looks, you know what? It looks like it bounced, Joe. Initially, it looked like he had his arms and hands underneath it, but from that angle there, it looked like his arms were separated. The ball bounced in between them. I, I, and, and regardless, I, I, from what we've seen, I, I don't know that, I don't see how they can overturn that. Well, you've got. They're all watching it on the jumbotron here. The Giants players are all signaling, yep, that's a touchdown. See, his hands are under it there. From that angle there, it looks like it's a catch. And look at this angle. His hands are underneath the football. Does the ball hit his chest, come up, and hit the grass afterward? It, it's I hard would to, say he catches that. Yeah, it's hard to tell there after it comes in as to whether or not the tip of the ball touches the ground between his elbows. So the question is, is it indisputable evidence? I think you could make the case that it isn't, and therefore that they would keep the call on the field. But you can see why Amani Toomer hopped up and immediately said, I caught it, and why the Giants players are watching that from the field on the Jumbotron saying that should be a touchdown. Yeah, I think a lot of times you can tell a lot by the body language of the player involved. You know, the way Amani jumped up immediately and thought that he had it, you know, you'd think that he would, you know, obviously he knows better than anybody whether or not he caught it, but, you know, having said that, what we've seen, I, I don't see enough there that they're going to come back and say, yeah, it's indisputable, and he did, in fact, catch the ball, and it's a touchdown. I, I think they're going to keep with the ruling on the field. If they stay with the ruling, it's fourth and goal from the six. They overturn it. It's a touchdown with the extra point coming and a chance to make it a two-point game. So, so much is riding on this call by Walt Coleman, who's looking at it under the hood. But again, this look at it, as we slow it down, the hands are definitely underneath the ball. Does it hit his chest and hit the grass? After reviewing the play, the receiver had his hands under the ball. It's a completed catch for a touchdown. So the Giants get the call, and Amani Toomer makes a great catch, getting his hands underneath it. 50th career touchdown catch, and with the extra point coming, this is about to be a two-point game. Well, that is a great job by Amani Toomer. He, he seems to be the one guy that Eli Manning has the most confidence in, you know, when he's turning the football loose. You know, I am still surprised. I'm not questioning that whether his arms were underneath it, but I am surprised based on what we saw that they were able to overturn the call. High snap. And the extra point is good. What a good job that was by Fiegels. Took a high snap, got it down, and that extra point makes it a two-point game, and here's another look at the touchdown. Yeah, here's it from the beginning, and you're going you're gonna to see as Eli Manning is working to his left, Amani Toomer in the slot, and a ball that, you know, really should not have been as close as what it was. If, if Eli is able to get that ball up a little bit, then he makes the easy catch, but a great job here by Amani Toomer of getting into the end zone. Now he's drifting a little bit on Eli Manning. He's got to be able to put his feet in the ground and come back to the ball, and if he does that, then he creates an easier reception for himself as well. I think so often they rely on that part of replay where they say there's not enough indisputable evidence to overturn the call. I would say in that case, from every look that we got at it, I think they got the call right. I think they could have said, but well, we didn't see it totally to say that, yeah, he did catch it. But I think every angle we had, it looked like the hands 
were underneath the football and they in the end got the call right. Yeah, I would agree with that. Well, you saw there the hands and arms underneath the ball and I think that's the one that they went off of to, to make the decision and and you are right that more times than not they'll fall back on well which they should I mean that's that is the way that the rule reads but you know I would say that they probably got it right as well and the way Imani Toomer again the way he reacted after the catch it, it appeared that that he fully believed that he had caught it as well. How about these gusts of winds just knocked the ball off the tee. So it is blowing down there and it's been getting worse as we have gone along. Now the question is can the Chicago team move the ball on the Giants defense. They've had great field position this half and haven't done a whole lot with it. And the big problem is because of the, the, the Bears have not run the football very well. How about that again Tynes hits it out of bounds. Yeah, he's getting good at that. He opened the game with it last week. And two plays later there was a touchdown in the Minnesota game and he's done it now a couple of times in this game and that's why you know it's one thing to say we're not going to kick it to Devin Hester but you still got to play I mean you can't kick it out of bounds and give the ball to the Bears on the 40 yard line after your offense just went down and made it a two point game. Well, you could see Coughlin's reaction I think Tynes reaction is it's blowing down here and you tell me don't kick it to him <laughs> but you don't want me to kick it out of bounds here's Peterson and Adrian Peterson is tripped up by Reggie Torbor in the end a gain of seven. Well and to go back to what I was saying because the Bears really have not run the ball all that well here in this ball game you know now a lot of being able to take time off the clock and get themselves in a position to to either kick a field goal and force the, the Giants to get seven points or get a touchdown and then put it again you know to a nine point game regardless I think a lot of it is going to fall on the shoulders of Rex Grossman because they just haven't run the ball that effectively. Second down and three. Peterson goes nowhere was hit first by Michael Strahan came off the edge made the play a loss of one third down coming up Strahan's had a nice day no, he's really he's had he's had a nice year you know I mean there's so much conversation I know every year in the offseason particularly among veterans about how important training camp is to somebody and I know he started out a little bit slow but if it meant him missing training camp again next year to ensure that he comes back to this team I think I'd let him go spend the summer out on the West Coast again. Third down and four. Big fly. Play action from Grossman who is sacked again. Six on the day Justin Tuck. No time whatsoever and nowhere for Grossman to go and the Giants who just made it a two point game are about to get it back. Well then watch Strahan on the back side he takes away the tight end as you see he goes over there and that's that's where Grossman was wanting to go so you know by design Grossman thought he was going to have the tight end in the flat but Strahan takes that away and then you get the pressure from Tuck out on the outside that that brings Grossman to the ground. So now Maynard. Quarters goes nowhere. Ball is marked around the 23, so here we are again. Eli Manning has the opportunity. It's a two point game, a chance to get his team down the field and put him in a position to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. Well, and, and that's right. I mean, regardless of what's happened up to this point, you know, good or bad. You know here we are with five minutes or so left in the in the fourth quarter and you have a chance to go down the field and win the game for your team and and at the end of the day that's that's really what it's all about that's what the quarterback position is all about Eli Manning has had some success with these chances he is 27 and 23 in his career as a starter in the NFL trying to come up with a big win here today for the Giants a handoff is to Ruben Drones. It was the last veteran running back left standing after the injury to Ward and they've taken him for x-rays on his ankle again a five by Ruben Drones or lacquer on the tackle. Plenty of time. 
Three timeouts left, down by two. David Tyree back in the mix offensively has a first down out across the 35 to the 36. And Eli Manning, we have seen even in games when he struggles, can get on a hot streak, which only adds to the frustration when the inconsistency hits. And we'll see how he does here with this chance. Well, Jeremy Shockey, he's having a hard time picking up the play that Eli is calling. To block there and Drone somehow lost the football and picked it right back up. Bounced right back into his arms and a gain of three. I tell you, he had a good hole in there too. I mean, look at the lane that Drones has to go, and it's Tommy Harris that that gets his arm on the ball. It looked like nobody touched it when he first went through at first blush, but Tommy Harris was the one who got it loose. Under three and a half to play. Second down, pass complete. That's Toomer to the 45-yard line. Remember, the Giants are working into the wind, which is a factor. Lawrence Tyne is the place kicker for New York. Well, there's plenty of time. I, 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 would, I would encourage Eli to slow things down a little bit if he wants to try to milk this thing down and, and make this the last possession for the game. Handoff is to Drones, blocking out in front of him. He is shy of the 40. Picked up four and a half. Alex Brown on the tackle for Chicago. You know, it's not surprising to me that Amani Toomer was on the receiving end of that, that last pass. It, you know, you can just tell the confidence level that Eli has in him. I wouldn't be surprised if that's where he's looking at on each and every one of these next few passes. left scans the field comes back to his right pass is caught David Tyree down inside the 20 24 yards from Eli Manning who is making it count now as we approach the two-minute warning at Soldier Field yeah, and you just you, you'd have to believe that the Giants now are gonna go to their huddle up offense and try to milk the clock down Tyree with the catch two on this possession Giants on the march down by two the Bears into Washington night football Bears Redskins live on NFL Network Giants defense has set up this opportunity for Eli Manning who is six for eight over the last two drives Giants have never led in this game and Eli Manning could erase all the headlines of the New York tabloids with a successful drive here and a win in Chicago Handoff is to Drones. Swallowed up immediately by Mark Anderson, no game. And a timeout taken by Chicago, that's their first. If you're just joining us, here's a recap of what we have witnessed here today. Eli Manning, his first of two interceptions today. He's turned it over three times. Desmond Clark with the first touchdown of the day an opportunity for Hester he couldn't make the connection in this second half an interception thrown by Eli Manning to Tillman for a touch and catch for a touchdown but the last time the Giants had it Troy it was that replay that went the way of the Giants as they gave Amani Toomer a catch as he cradled it before it hit the ground makes it a two point game and after the defense does it again here are the Giants with an opportunity ball inside the 20 down by two. That's right. And because Amani Toomer's catch was ruled a touchdown and ruled a catch, I mean, now all they need is a field goal as opposed to having to settle for the field goal then. They would now be in a position where they have to score the touchdown. And hurry up. Now they just want to take as much time off the clock as they can. Well within field goal range. They go toward the end zone. And it's caught on a sliding catch by Plexico Burris. And a good throw by Eli Manning keeping that one down. I mean, you get down in this part of the field with good coverage by Charles Tillman. 
and to put the ball low to where only Plexico Burris was going to be able to make this catch. It's a real nice throw right there. Let me ask you, we have seen, I think you and I have been on the same page thinking that it looked like they were being very conservative at times in this game with the play calling because of Eli Manning's struggles the last two weeks. He had a good drive the last possession. He threw the touchdown pass. And now here they are needing just a field goal. They put it in his hands and he makes a great throw. And, and that's a great point and it's a great job by Eli Manning and more importantly it's probably a great call by Kevin Gilbride showing confidence you know in Eli Manning because you know if that ball's intercepted or a turnover here I mean <laughs> I don't know what happens back in New York but you know you try to pick up the first down you want to score the touchdown now with one timeout left now the Giants can elect to just run this thing down if that's what they want to do they can run it down and then try to settle for a field goal if they score now to take the lead well now they're going to give the ball back to Chicago with with a lot of time on the clock it's going to be interesting now to see what exactly the Giants are going to try to do. And now timeout is taken. They're going to make sure, I guess, now that we're under two minutes, a booth review. So the timeout by Chicago allows the booth enough time to look at this by Burris, and, and nothing ever stood out to me to say it wasn't a catch, but let's look. I don't see the ball yeah, come I loose at all. I don't know what exactly they're reviewing. I thought it was a pretty clean catch by by Plexico Burris, but I, I think what, what I think that I'm seeing that the Giants are going to try to do as we take another look at it, the ball's not moving. I, I think that's a catch, but it, the Giants can run this thing down to where the field goal is the last play of the game, and if they make it, they win. Instead of scoring here, scoring a touchdown, then forcing Chicago to have to score a touchdown of their own, but given to, giving them time on the clock. I think if I were in Tom Coughlin's shoes, you know, not and and I understand this field goals. There's no guarantee you're going to make the field goal, but I, I think that I would I would go with my field goal team and just make it the last play of the game. And we saw this a couple of weeks ago in that Eagles Redskins game where the Redskins let the Eagles score just to have another shot at it with the ball in their hands. After Here comes a the call. Play, the ruling on the field stands of a completed kick. So what you're saying is take a knee, make Chicago use their final timeout, let the clock drain out, you either make the field goal or you don't, but you hold on to the ball till the end, and that's how the game comes to a close. Yeah, you take a knee a couple of times in order to run it down to three seconds and, and then kick the field goal and win the game. You know, or as I said, you, you you take the knee here, force him to run the last time out, maybe run, take a knee a second time, and then on third down, maybe you run it one time and see if you can't run it in. Let's see what the Giants do on first and goal. It's drones, and they just let him walk into the end zone. So there's the good news for the Giants. They take their first lead of the day. But now the Bears, who knows how it's going to end, but they'll have Devin Hester waiting deep for the kick, and they'll have a minute and a half with a timeout to do something. Well, if you're just joining us, we know some new audiences just joined this telecast. The Giants just pounded the ball into the end zone to take their first lead of the day. Eli Manning struggled through most of the afternoon and evening, but the last two drives, outstanding. And he has put his Giants on top here with a minute 33 left in this game. What Troy and I were just talking about is that with a first and goal, the Giants could have elected to drain the game clock, take a shot at the game-winning field goal. Instead, the Bears will get the ball back, and they have the ultimate special teams weapon in Devin Hester waiting for the kick from Lawrence Times. There's Ruben Drones getting the touchdown. And now here comes Devin Hester, and we've seen already Tynes kick it out of bounds twice, which gives the Bears the ball at their own That's 40. Right. That's right. And so now if you're, you know, I'm sure Coughlin is telling Tynes, hey, look, you cannot kick the ball out of bounds. Well, you know, again, that's like saying don't kick it to Devin Hester. Those are easy things to say. You know, and yeah, that's what you want to do, but then executing it's an entirely different thing. And, you know, 
props to, to Eli Manning and the job that he did. I mean, he he now, you know, on that possession, got the team down the field, put them in a position to take the lead. And as I said, I mean, that's that's what quarterbacks are supposed to do. I mean, regardless of what's happened up to that point, you know, can you get your team down the field and win a football game? And he's done his part. Now, because of the decisions that were made, now it's going to be up to the defense. Tynes hits it. Hester's going to have a chance for a return. With blocking out in front of him, Devin Hester crosses the 40, and there's plenty of time for Chicago. They've got a minute 28 and a timeout. They did not have to burn their last timeout. And Tom Coughlin was watching nervously as Devin Hester had a chance there on a return. It's like a pitching coach or a manager telling a pitcher, look, don't walk him, but don't yeah. give him anything good to hit. Tom Coughlin was watching that like every New York Giant fan back in New York. If the Giants win this game, one of the keys to the win would be controlling Devin Hester. Here's a screen to Peterson, and what a good play by the rookie Johnson. Michael Johnson came up and tripped up Adrian Peterson, a gain of only one. I'm not so sure Adrian Peterson doesn't score if Michael Johnson doesn't make that play. is complete to Clark. Clock will continue to run. Clark is very close to first down yardage, just shy. So the Bears pick up the first down, and now all of a sudden, with a ball inside the 45, Grossman's going to clock it. They'll have a timeout left, and they'll have a chance down by five. 36 seconds remaining. Let's go back to that play by the rookie Michael Johnson getting the start today. Yeah, really a great job by him. And you're going to see that they get the ball. They come with the corner blitz. They get the ball to Peterson right there. And here's Johnson. And look at all that room out there that Peterson was going to have to run with blockers out in front of him. I mean, that, that was going to be a foot race to the end zone. 